Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade. I had a really good question from a viewer recently asking, how do you know when to sell an asset? And, you know, some people will get uh, endlessly twisted up around the axle trying to figure out the mathematically optimal time to sell an asset. And of course, there is not one because you cannot predict the future. You would have to be able to accurately predict the future and know when the top in the market was or the relative top. Uh, compared to other assets or something like that. And those are things you can only know in hindsight from the future, looking into the past. And so mathematically, there is no best answer. So there are a number of things that I came up with, reasons why you would sell. And I wanted to just go through the list and kind of explain each one and kind of create some clarity about those things. So the first is you need money to live on, right? So if you work your entire career, you uh, accumulate a lot of assets. Most Americans will typically do this in the form of 401k accounts full of stocks and ETFs and mutual funds. And then when you're retired, some of those people's strategies will be to slowly sell off those assets over time for cash, withdraw the cash and use those to pay living expenses. So, you know, that's a point when you would sell an asset and similarly, I know there are a lot of viewers on this channel who simply have a lot of discretionary income. They put uh, boxes of TCG cards back in their closet and they have no horizon for when they might sell. They simply have no need for the money and they're just holding them and they'll sell, you know, someday down in the future. And for them, that may be the case. They may come to a time 10, 15, 20 years from now, dig out an Aquaria booster box from their closet see how many thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars it sells for, and just go sell it to pay some bills, uh, take a vacation, uh, something else. So uh, selling assets to get cash to live on, that's the first reason you might know it's time to sell something. So the second is, kind of sarcastically, I put capitulation on this list, and obviously you should never sell as capitulation, but a lot of people do. And what that means is, the value of an asset goes down. They mistakenly let the price drive their sentiment. They start to believe that because the price is down, the asset is terrible, it is never coming back and they should not hold it anymore. And so they sell for a loss or they sell for a lot less than the product had gone up to recently. They may not be selling for a loss depending on how long they've held the product, but no, you should never sell an asset because the market is down. Don't let price drive your sentiment you need to do your own fundamental analysis on what you think an asset is worth. And then if the market is disagreeing with you and saying it's worth a lot less than that right now, simply hold it, wait for it to go back up. On a long timeline, uh, the market is a weighing machine and it will get it right more than it gets it wrong. So uh, do not sell because you're capitulating, but sadly that is a reason that people sell. And if you've ever heard somebody use the words, I have to protect what I have left, that's uh, capitulation. So the third is rebalancing. And what this means is you might have, let, let's say you had a huge position in Double Masters 2022 and the year is 2030. And who knows what those boxes will run up to by that point. But you just have way too much money uh, centralized in that one asset, a stack of boxes of Double Masters 2022. And so you say, well, you know, I want to reduce the risk. So maybe you sell 80% of those boxes and you put that money into something else, either new product at the time or different old product or something else entirely. Maybe you buy ETFs or you buy real estate or something else, but you essentially sell the asset because the price has run up and you just want to uh, rebalance to not have so much concentrated in one thing. And really this is this also mitigates risk. And you can imagine in the case of say real estate, let's say you own a lot of real estate, you know, in one small area. Let's say you own uh, 10 acres of zoned commercial property in some small area. Uh, if it's run up a bunch, maybe you want to get rid of some of that because if there's a big economic downturn in that town, you know, maybe the big factory closes or, you know, maybe uh, a, a real black swan event. Maybe there's a toxic waste spill that just destroys the town. You know, things like that. You can have too much risk concentrated in one thing. And so rebalancing out of it into 
smaller positions in each of several other things can be a good reason to sell an asset that's run up. But again, none of this tells you when to sell it. You know, what price do you go for? What amount of gain? What compound annual growth rate? Those are things you have to judge. And uh, the, the last reason that I, I wrote down was you might sell something because you believe that there is better upside opportunity in something else. So again, let's imagine that you had some, let's say a, a secret layer or something, and, and you know you bought the secret layer and Watsy delivered it finally, and then it runs up in price 3x in six months or something. Well, you may be looking at that, and when you do your own fundamental analysis on it, you may say, there is no chance that this continues to run up this high anymore, and odds are it's going to retrace. And so um, you decide to go ahead and sell it because you think that the product will either turn around and give back some of those gains, or it will simply start uh, appreciating much slower in the future than it has in the past. And you think, hey, if I go ahead and sell some or all of my position in this, I can take that cash and I can use it to buy positions in other new products that, because they're new, they haven't run up at all. And so you believe that there is higher upside opportunity in other things. And of course, the common thing between all of these reasons is you cannot be sure. You have to do your own fundamental analysis. You have to uh, decide that the time is right and it's a risk. Um, as Reagan said, there's risk in any course of action. And it's the same in investing. Every time that you buy or you sell something, you are essentially trying to predict the future. You're predicting that the thing you are buying will go up, that it will go up at a rate that is acceptable to you. And when you sell something, you are predicting that whatever you will do with that cash is more valuable than keeping it tied up in the asset that you are selling. So uh, think about those things. Let me know what you think. And are there any other reasons you can think of that you might? Here's another one. Um, maybe you sell because you have customers. You know, imagine Rudy with his warehouses full of old magic product. His business is to sell product and make money, some of which is old product. And so, you know, maybe he has customers that he wants to satisfy by selling it. And that's just one, uh, that's one leg of his business along with selling new product and other things. And so, you know, selling that product may be just a part of keeping customers satisfied. So there's another one. So let me know if you have any suggestions, any ideas, anything you disagree with, because you guys are great at that. Otherwise, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Join the Patreon and join me on Final Trade. Thanks a lot.